Question 1. Why are these yellow lines painted across the road? C. To make you aware of your speed. These lines are often found on the approach to a roundabout or a dangerous junction. They give you extra warning to adjust your speed. Look well ahead and do this in good time. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions, 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules. Even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time. Let's get back to the video. Question 2. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? C. Lorry. The highest point of the bridge is in the center, so a large vehicle might have to move to the center of the road to have enough room to pass safely under the bridge. Question 3. Where would you see this sign? D on the rear of a school bus or coach. Vehicles that are used to carry children to and from school will be traveling at busy times of the day. If you're following a vehicle with this sign, be prepared for it to make frequent stops. It might pick up or set down passengers in places other than normal bus stops. Question 4. Which vehicles should use the left-hand lane on a three-lane motorway? A. Any vehicle that isn't overtaking. On a motorway, all traffic should use the left-hand lane unless overtaking. When overtaking a number of slower vehicles, move back to the left-hand lane when you're safely passed. Check your mirrors frequently, and don't stay in the middle or right-hand lane if the left-hand lane is free. Question 5. Your vehicle breaks down on a motorway, and you need to call for help. Why might it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone rather than a mobile phone? A. It allows easy location by the emergency services. On a motorway, it's best to use a roadside emergency telephone, so that the emergency services are able to find you easily. The location of the nearest telephone is shown by an arrow on marker posts at the edge of the hard shoulder. If you use a mobile, find out the number on the nearest marker post before you call. This number will let the operator know where you are, and in which direction you are traveling. Question 6. When should you use the right-hand lane of a three-lane dual carriageway? B. When you're overtaking or turning right. You should normally use the left-hand lane on any dual carriageway unless you're overtaking or turning right. When overtaking on a dual carriageway, look for vehicles ahead that are turning right. They may be slowing or stopped. You need to see them in good time so that you can take appropriate action. Question 7. When may you overtake on a one-way street? A. On either the right or the left. You can overtake other traffic on either side when traveling in a one-way street. Make full use of your mirrors and ensure it's clear all around before you attempt to overtake. 
look for signs and road markings, and use the most suitable lane for your destination. Question 8. Who is authorized to signal you to stop? D. A police officer. You must obey signals to stop given by police and traffic officers, traffic wardens and school crossing patrols. Failure to do so is an offense and could lead to prosecution. Question 9. Which type of sign tells you what you must not do? A. Signs in the shape of a circle give orders. A sign with a red circle means that you aren't allowed to do something. Study know your traffic signs to ensure that you understand what the different traffic signs mean. Question 10. What does this sign mean? C. No motor vehicles. A sign will indicate which types of vehicles are prohibited from certain roads. Make sure that you know which signs apply to the vehicle you're using. Question 11. Where would you see a contraflow bus lane? B. On a one-way street. The traffic permitted to use a contraflow lane travels in the opposite direction to traffic in the other lanes on the road. Question 12. What does this traffic sign mean? A. Danger ahead. This sign is there to alert you to the likelihood of danger ahead. It may be accompanied by a plate indicating the type of hazard. Be ready to reduce your speed and take avoiding action. Question 13. What does this sign mean? B. Contraflow system. If you use the right-hand lane in a contraflow system, you'll be traveling with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Observe speed limits and keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. Question 14. At traffic lights, what does it mean when the amber light shows on its own? D. Stop at the stop line. When the amber light is showing on its own, the red light will follow next. The amber light means stop, unless you've already crossed the stop line or you're so close to it that stopping may cause a collision. Question 15. What does this road marking mean? D. You're approaching a hazard. A single broken line along the center of the road, with long markings and short gaps, is a hazard warning line. Don't cross it unless you can see that the road is clear well ahead. Question 16. How will a police officer in a patrol vehicle signal for you to stop? A. Flash the headlights, indicate left and point to the left. You must obey signals given by the police. If a police officer in a patrol vehicle wants you to pull over, they'll indicate this without causing danger to you or other traffic. Question 17. Where can you find reflective amber studs on a motorway? D. 
B, on the right-hand edge of the road. At night or in poor visibility, reflective studs on the road help you to judge your position on the carriageway. Question 18. What does this sign mean? B. End of restriction. Temporary restrictions on motorways are shown on signs that have flashing amber lights. At the end of the restriction, you'll see this sign without any flashing lights. Question 19. When should tire pressures be checked? C. When tires are cold. Check the tire pressures when the tires are cold. This will give you a more accurate reading. The heat generated on a long journey will raise the pressure inside the tire. Question 20. How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery? D. Take it to a local authority disposal site. Batteries contain acid, which is hazardous, and they must be disposed of safely. This means taking them to an appropriate disposal site. Question 21. What's most likely to increase fuel consumption? B. Harsh braking and accelerating. Accelerating and braking gently and smoothly will help to save fuel and reduce wear on your vehicle. This makes it better for the environment too. Question 22. You're approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the traffic lights have failed? B. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. When approaching a junction where the traffic lights have failed, you should proceed with caution. Treat the situation as an unmarked junction and be prepared to stop. Question 23. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver behind is following very closely? D. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. If the driver behind is following too closely, there's a danger they'll collide with the back of your vehicle if you stop suddenly. You can reduce this risk by slowing down and increasing the safety margin in front of you. This reduces the chance that you'll have to stop suddenly and allows you to spread your braking over a greater distance. This is an example of defensive driving. Question 24. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along this street? A. Children running out between vehicles. On roads where there are many parked vehicles, you might not be able to see children between parked cars, and they may run out into the road without looking. Question 25. Which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway? D. Powered mobility scooters. Motorways mustn't be used by pedestrians, cyclists, motorcycles under 50 cc, certain slow-moving vehicles without permission, and powered wheelchairs slash mobility scooters. Question 26. You see this amber traffic light ahead. Which light or lights will come on next?
C. Red alone. At junctions controlled by traffic lights, you must stop behind the white line until the lights change to green. A red light, an amber light, and red and amber lights showing together all mean stop. You may proceed when the light is green unless your exit road is blocked or pedestrians are crossing in front of you. If you're approaching traffic lights that are visible from a distance and the light has been green for some time, be ready to slow down and stop, because the lights are likely to change. Question 27. What does this sign mean? A. Hump Bridge You'll need to slow down. At hump bridges, your view ahead will be restricted, and the road will often be narrow. If the bridge is very steep, sound your horn to warn others of your approach. Going over the bridge too fast is highly dangerous to other road users, and could even cause your wheels to leave the road, with the resulting loss of control. Question 28. What does this sign mean? B. Direction to park and ride car park. To ease the congestion in town centers, some cities and towns provide park and ride schemes. These allow you to park in a designated area and ride by bus into the center. Park and ride schemes are usually cheaper and easier than car parking in the town center. Question 29. Why should you test your brakes after this hazard? D. Your brakes will be wet. A ford is a crossing over a stream that's shallow enough to drive or ride through. After you've gone through a ford or deep puddle, your brakes will be wet and they won't work as well as usual. To dry them out, apply a light brake pressure while moving slowly. Don't travel at normal speeds until you're sure your brakes are working properly again. Question 30. You're traveling on a motorway in England. When must you stop your vehicle? D. When signaled to stop by a traffic officer. You'll find traffic officers on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales. They work in partnership with the police, helping to keep traffic moving, and helping to make your journey as safe as possible. It's an offence not to comply with the directions given by a traffic officer. Question 31. Who may use Taucan crossings? A. Cyclists and pedestrians. There are some crossings where cycle routes lead cyclists to cross at the same place as pedestrians. These are called Taucan crossings. Always look out for cyclists, as they're likely to be approaching faster than pedestrians. Question 32. Which sign means there will be two-way traffic crossing your route ahead? B. This sign is found in or at the end of a one-way system. It warns you that traffic will be crossing your path from both directions. Question 33. Which sign means turn left ahead? B. Blue circles tell you what you must do, and this sign gives a clear instruction to turn left ahead. You should be looking out for signs at all times and know what they mean. Question 34. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? B. 
D. When there's a risk of further danger. Don't move a casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. Question 35. What does it mean if this light comes on while you're driving? A. A fault in the braking system. If this light comes on, you should have the brake system checked immediately. A faulty braking system could have dangerous consequences. Question 36. You're about to start a journey in freezing weather. What part of your vehicle should you clear of ice and snow? D. The windows. Driving in bad weather increases your risk of having a collision. If you absolutely have to travel, clear your lights, mirrors, number plates and windows of any snow or ice, so that you can see and be seen. Question 37. You're driving in fog. Why should you keep well back from the vehicle in front? B. In case it stops suddenly. If you're following another road user in fog, stay well back. The driver in front won't be able to see hazards until they're close, and might need to brake suddenly. Also, the road surface is likely to be wet and could be slippery. Question 38. When should you use the left-hand lane of a motorway? A. When the road ahead is clear. You should drive in the left-hand lane whenever possible. Only use the other lanes for overtaking or when directed to do so by signals. Using other lanes when the left-hand lane is empty can frustrate drivers behind you. Question 39. You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop in an emergency? A. Rapidly and firmly. You may have to stop in an emergency due to a misjudgment by another driver or a hazard arising suddenly, such as a child running out into the road. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, you should apply the brakes immediately, and keep them firmly applied until you stop. Question 40. Why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? B. To prevent dazzling drivers behind. Don't forget to switch off your fog lights when the weather improves. You could be prosecuted for driving with them on in good visibility. The high intensity of rear fog lights can dazzle drivers behind and make your brake lights difficult to notice. Question 41. You're driving on a wet road. What should you do if you have to stop your vehicle in an emergency? C. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. As you drive, look well ahead and all around, so that you're ready for any hazards that might develop. If you have to stop in an emergency, react as soon as you can while keeping control of the vehicle. Keep both hands on the steering wheel so you can control the vehicle's direction of travel. Question 42. What's the safest thing to do if you have to leave valuables in your car? A. Lock them out of sight. 
if you have to leave valuables in your car, lock them out of sight. This is the best way to deter an opportunist thief. Question 43. You're approaching a zebra crossing. What should you do if pedestrians are waiting to cross? B. Slow down and prepare to stop. As you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross. Where you can see them, slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. Question 44. You need glasses to read a vehicle number plate at the required distance. When must you wear them? D. Whenever you're driving. Have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically, as your vision may change. Question 45. When may you stop on an urban clearway? C. To set down and pick up passengers. Urban clearways have their times of operation clearly signed. You may only stop to pick up or set down passengers. Question 46. When do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstruction to your view? B. When you're approaching bends and junctions. Windscreen pillars can obstruct your view, particularly at bends and junctions. Look out for other road users, especially cyclists, motorcyclists and pedestrians who can easily be overlooked. Question 47. The road outside this school is marked with yellow zigzag lines. What do these lines mean? D. You shouldn't wait or park your vehicle here. Parking here would block other road users' view of the school entrance, and would endanger the lives of children on their way to and from school. Question 48. Which lights should you use when you're driving in a tunnel? A. Dipped headlights. Before entering a tunnel, you should switch on your dipped headlights, as this will allow you to see and be seen. In many tunnels, it's a legal requirement. Don't wear sunglasses while you're driving in a tunnel. Question 49. What should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing? D. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. Question 50. What does it mean if your insurance policy has an excess of £500? C. You have to pay the first £500 of the cost of any claim. Having an excess on your policy will help to keep the premium down. However, if you make a claim, you have to pay the excess yourself in this case, £500. If you want to pass DVSA theory test in first time, you can download our EOS app. App contains 2500 DVSA test questions. 250 hazard perception videos, 630 traffic road signs and 300 highway code rules.
even 98.50% people pass their test first time after using our app. You can find link in the description, download app for free from App Store which contains latest 2024 material licensed by DVSA Authority, get 3 days free trial for a limited time.